And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. So you're sensitive T. Hey guys, it's Standing for Truth and we are live tonight. We have an exciting one. We've got T-Jump and John Maddox. They are going to be debating intelligent design. Both of them, they're not strangers to debates. They're both really good at debates, so we can guarantee this is going to be one to remember. We're going to have uh, really flexible openings, opening statements, uh, no more than 10 minutes. And then we're going to jump into discussion. Discussion for about 45 45 minutes, followed by a couple quick uh, closing statements just to wrap things up. And as usual, a question and answer. So uh, anybody in the chat has a question they want to ask one of the debaters, please tag either myself or praise I am that I am. And we'll be sure to ask your question. Uh, before we go into the openings, uh, what we'll do, I think it's fair to uh, give each debater just a quick intro to kind of tell everybody who they are, what's going on at their channel, and, and, and so on. We can start with uh, T-Jump. T-Jump, thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Uh, I'm T-Jump. I debate theists and debunk pseudoscience stuff, like intelligent design. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's good enough. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash T-Jump. That's about all you need to know. Awesome. Thanks, T-Jump. Um, and John, over to you, brother. Uh, well, thanks for having me fun. Look at this. Uh, um, provides plausible probable to search that on YouTube. Um, not the only reason, but a major foundation of my the reason I started the channel was to address some of the arguments made by people like T Jump, who claim that things are pseudoscience and uh, not actually reasonable. Uh, arguments to be made and conclusions to be reached. So I'm looking forward to this uh, conversation. Awesome. Well, thanks, John. Thanks to the both of you. Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll jump into a uh, flexible opening. We can start with uh, you, John. Um, I'll just put the clock at, at 10 minutes. You, you know, you guys don't have to use all of that time, of course. Um, whatever time's not used, what we'll do is we'll throw it into the um, discussion. So, uh, John, over to you. Well, tonight uh, we're going to be discussing the aspect of intelligent design, and it's my position that it's a much more plausible and logical conclusion to reach given the evidence and the plethora of components that make up uh, what enables life to exist. And and you, when you compare them to any other aspects of things that we would consider impossible without an intelligent agent, uh, to me, it seems like it requires a complete suspension of rational thought, logic, and reasonable thinking to believe that uh, pure chance and or determinism can be the reasonable explanation for our existence in the context of life. So in regards to that, I'm share my screen here and let me know when this goes through i'm just gonna jump in there real quick i'm not sure if it's just me uh, there john but it looks like there's a bit of a lag or a delay on your end um it would just be me though i just want to make sure before we get into a discussion that everything's flowing good is there any lag for you guys at all What, yeah, what kind of lag was coming through? Lag, yeah. So unless, um, yeah, John, usually your audio uh, lag or video lag looks like more of a video lag. But usually you're you're good. I don't know unless you want to like decrease the bandwidth or, or um, I and mean, we can we can keep it yeah, going as is. And if there's any issues later, we can try and address them. No, hang on. We'll just. Uh... All right, uh, does that change anything up a little bit? Uh, maybe Let's slightly see. better, yeah. Okay. All right, so the 
when you consider what enables life to exist, it's a, a fundamental component is information. So let's look at some uh, if then, if and then uh, statements. So if information is immaterial and non-random information requires an intelligent agent, then intelligent agents are required for all controlled process instruction. If non-random information create creation requires a mind and DNA genetic code contains non-random information, then a mind was required for genetic code to exist. If coding and programming information is immaterial and the medium which contains it is not relevant to its existence, then no in undirected process can create it. If codes require intelligence to assign arbitrary values and decoding requires equally equal arbitrarily assigned values and genetic code is is encoded, transferred, and decoded, and gene expression requires translation of arbitrary values, then a mind was required for genetic code to exist. If programming requires if-then-else logic rules and syntax, semantic, and pragmatics are required for its execution, and biological cells contain all of these and tools for execution, and no other programming would happen by chance, then an intelligent agent is required for the initial programming. If time-based controls are required for code execution and are executed by separate functions and are vital to embryo development and modify outcomes based on temporal variables and require simultaneous execution, then foreknowledge of the outcome is required. If literal nanomachines are required for programming execution and non-random information cannot be accessed without their prior existence and their non-random formation instructions are encoded in the genetic code, then simultaneous existence is required. Therefore, if in any other context it is accepted that non-random information, coding, decoding, programming, time-based controls, and nanomachines require intelligent agents to exist and if life requires all of these to exist and all observed organisms do, then intelligent design is a logical conclusion for our existence. Now, I say all of these things uh, to create you know, a foundational uh, component to this conversation, and all of the arguments that I made can easily be uh, defended via scientific papers and relatively uh, general acceptance in. Uh, of all of the top components of those if then if and then statements other than the mind being required because uh, huge aspects of academia and atheists such as my opponent Tom Jump uh, are all desperately searching for ways around the blaringly obvious evidence that screams design and want to uh, equate it to completely implausible and improbable uh, options and creative ways to think of things that can potentially circumvent uh, these mind-bending enigmas in regards to our existence. So the position I'm putting forth uh, uh, Yeah, John, you the audience is that if oh, John, uh, uh, real quick, real quick, I stopped your time too. You're just having moments of uh, where you kind of sound like a robot, as in the uh, audio is glitching uh, slightly. Right. I'm not sure if it, it's good to get this all sorted out before the discussion. We'll I guess stop. would be the point. We'll stop, stop cam for right now. Um, okay. is, that, is that modifying it at all? Sounds good now. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll look okay. out for it though. Okay. Anyway, the uh, ultimate point I'm making is in. There are very few individuals on this planet that if you made direct comparisons uh, to a lot of the technologies that exist inside of our bodies and enable life to exist, in any other context, you would be considered out to lunch to claim that they happened by accident or by frozen accident or by pure chance. And uh, which is why I wonder in regards to things so vital, important and fundamental as our very existence, why there is such desperate attempts to remove that basic logic uh, from the equation in terms of our uh, presence and consciousness. And I'll yield my time.
Awesome. Well, thanks so much for that opening there, John. We appreciate it. We'll hand it over to uh, Tom. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. The, thanks for having me on standing. Um, thanks for John for being here and, and praise for doing whatever praise is doing. Um, so essentially the topic tonight is intelligent design and is it actually a thing? And the answer is no, it's not a thing. And we can tell that very simply because evidence is whatever we can use to differentiate between what's imaginary and what's real. And I can imagine that being designed. Well, that can't tell the difference between what's imaginary and what's real. Or that's really complicated and I can think it's designed. Well, that can't tell the difference between what's imaginary and what's real. To tell the difference between what's imaginary and what's real, you need testable predictions. You need to be able to say, if my hypothesis is true, then I can predict something we don't know yet. Do an experiment to confirm that prediction. Be like, ah, you see, I have a reason to believe that my what was in my head as a hypothesis is actually a description of the world. Science can do that. The abiogenesis theories that science are working on, which aren't directly related to evolution, all of those make testable predictions, which we have made significant progress on. So we have significant evidence of the abiogenesis being purely natural processes. For example, RNA on clay. Like many intelligent design proponents like to say that, well, we need information and information can only come from minds. Well, no, we've actually literally seen information being formed on clay from natural processes with no mind involved at all. So we just literally disprove their argument with observation, like we've done it, we're done. Information can happen on its own. We're done now. Um, there are also tons and tons of testable predictions we've made across the spectrum of abiogenesis. Uh, for example, just picking up the paper, the phys.org, recent one that was published March 16th, 2020, scientists have discovered the origins of the building blocks of life. Woo -hoo. Um, so we've actually discovered how proteins can form in this paper that was published a few weeks ago. Woohoo. And here's another great example of newscientist.com, the um, first life, the search for the first replicator, where it just lists all of the progress since the 1960s to 2001 and dozens of papers that have been um, published showing discoveries in the origin of life research that have made testable predictions, which have been confirmed, which show that the, the naturalistic hypothesis is the one that is supported because we can make testable predictions. Does it answer everything? No doesn't need to, just needs to answer one thing. If we can say, here's one thing we don't know, and if my hypothesis is correct, here's the answer to that one thing, and we get it right, that's evidence. So in 2001, there was a process that yielded RNA enzyme called R18, which could stick 14 nucleotides of building blocks in RNA and DNA onto existing RNA and using another RNA as a template, so self-replicating RNA. So we, we can use natural processes to create information and then self-replicate. We know RNA can form on clay. It's another example of it just forming on its own with no human intervention. Um, and this site I listed, the newscientist.com paper, can just list dozens of them. You can just go through one at a time and say, here's another testable prediction, which was made by the natural hypothesis, which is evidence of the abiogenesis. As far as I know, intelligent design makes no testable predictions. It's just imaginary. I can imagine complex things being designed by a mind. Well, that's that's fantastic. That's not evidence. I can I can't imagine natural processes designing things or creating this complicated stuff. Great, that's an argument from incredulity. What you can imagine doesn't matter. The only thing that counts as evidence is novel testable predictions. If we can create a hypothesis and say if this hypothesis is true, then I can see this result and then if we do a test and confirm that result, that's evidence. And the only side that has that is the naturalist side. So we have lots of evidence and you have none. You're just essentially using your imagination to imagine a way that's easier for your brain to understand, which reality just doesn't care. And we can use the exact same uh, fallacious intelligent design argument to argue that natural processes do it. For example, we've never seen a human build a galaxy or a universe or a solar system. We've seen natural processes that do those things, but never a human. So if we want to say the universe is kind of like a galaxy, well, it's more reasonable to conclude that actually natural processes do those and not minds, because we've never seen a mind do anything like that. The same thing applies in both ways. It's just an argument from analogy and doesn't work for either. It's just a useless junk argument. Um, so we know information can form on its own in natural processes. The natural hypothesis is consistently making testable predictions, which are confirmed in the laboratory over and over and over again throughout every every single year. And there's absolutely no evidence that supports intelligent design. So as far as I can tell, and as far as all the scientists can tell, the only hypothesis that is actually credible is the naturalist hypothesis, which is why in the Kitzmiller-Vistover trial, where intelligent design was put in a 
court case, in a federal court case, it was ruled to be junk because it's not actually a reasonable hypothesis. It does nothing. It makes no predictions. It has no clarity. It doesn't explain what the intelligence design information actually is. There are scientific definitions of information, but those exist in matter. So there's no such thing as information that only exists by created by minds. It just doesn't exist. There's no such definition. In physics, information is just anything that has uh, properties to it. So crystals have information. Matter has information. Um, Electrons have information, rocks have information, everything has information. So based off all the scientific definitions, information is everywhere, whether it's human or not. So again, there's just nothing that supports intelligent design. It's just a made up hypothesis that has no basis to conclude. It's not just imaginary. Oh, okay, thanks so much for that opening there, Tom. We appreciate it. Um, I'm going to set the timer here for the discussion. Uh, that's always everyone's favorite part. So let's keep it respectful and um, we'll, we'll try and keep it a free flowing dialogue and the clock is set. So whoever wants to start, take over. Yeah, I actually wanted to mention the arguments he brought up. Like none of those are actually arguments. An if then statement isn't an argument. It's, it's an if then statement. So I can just reject the first if and then the, the, the conclusion that then doesn't follow. But none of his actual if then statements actually worked because they're just assertions. Like I say, if a cat is a dog, then a dog is a dolphin. Just doesn't mean anything. You'd actually have to have a conclusion there, which would mean therefore cats are dolphins. You'd have to have a therefore. So if then therefore is how the, the structure should work. But none of his actual conclusions followed from any of his premises. So like he said, if uh, certain kinds of cells require, I forget the exact wording he used, then it requires a brain. Well, that's just not the case. Like you could just say, yes, we can just grant the, it requires this kind of complexity process, but I can just reject the then statement and say, no, it's, that's false. So nothing about his argument actually worked. It's pretty much nothing, just gibberish as far as I can tell. Like it'd be better to put it into a premise conclusion well, format. Well, Tom, well, Tom I, I apologize for you apparently not having the knowledge to understand the significance of the Bring points I was making and, and the thens those are my assertions. The other hands are things that are recognized in. No, no, none of that was none of that. Was, no, that was okay, you, you, you can bring one up. You can bring on. one up. Hey, if you, I let you talk, man. You gonna shut up and let me? Well, no, I want you to. Are you, are you, are you, are you let me? No, 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 no. Can you, you share screen? Just, can you, can you, you share screen? I want, I want you. I want to share screen so I can see it. Oh, well, hang on. I'm gonna respond to what you said. Some of the things you said. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I want, and then I will. I'm happy to go down that rabbit hole with you. So first off, your uh, RNA world stuff, RNA on clay, all the information being formed. Okay, so that's actually been uh, dramatically uh, dismissed for a variety of reasons. One of which that the RNA that did get to they did get to form uh, did it in a very uh, pattern based uh, structure. And in case you weren't paying attention in some of my if then statements, I specifically designated things in relation to biology as non-random, which everybody knows that the things that enable uh, coding execution in and syntax, semantics, and pragmatics are the result of non-random uh, information. And in conjunction with that, your whole argument about Oh, there's all this other information, all these different things. Yes, but they don't prescribe outcomes. And I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Like, what? So, for example, most stuff in <laughs> physics is determined. Like, so you're, you're breaking up. You're you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Oh, here I'm gonna jump in real quick and, there. And, uh, John, you're you're uh, breaking up pretty good there. Um, what do you but like uh, I said uh, earlier, John, you, um, John, I'm just gonna, so you're, you're breaking up pretty good there. We, and, um, we want Tom to be able to hear and understand, you know, what you're saying, the arguments you're putting forth. Uh, typically there's no issues on your end. Did you want to try and leave the stream and then jump back in or just do, cause we just want to make it a, okay. a smooth dialogue. All right. Perfect. Um, just to avoid dead air, yeah, for the audience. So next um, next Friday, we're going to have uh, Jordan on here again. Uh, he's he's he runs the podcast Reasons to Doubt, the Atheist podcast. 
Uh, he's a nuclear engineer. He'll be debating Bill Morgan, creation versus evolution. So uh, make sure you stay tuned for that one. And um, yeah, hopefully John can jump back in I'm here. Back. John, how are we I'm doing? wondering if uh, everybody at home is sucking up bandwidth in my neighborhood. It's possible. Am I still am I still breaking up? No, we can hear you fine now. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So so my last question was, um, I have no idea what anything you're saying is is regarding. So because my argument for RNA on clay is that information can form on clay. Like most of physics is determined. It's not random. There's some parts of physics that are random. So that really doesn't help your case at all. Yes, clay is determined, and how chemicals interact on clay is also determined. So RNA forming on clay is determined. But yes. the okay, I, I got you. The however, and what as I was saying, I guess I was breaking up is that that entire premise of RNA forming on clay being a reasonable and plausible foundation for the non random information that enables a, a code, the genetic code to exist. Wait, wait, wait. Been, I never said that. I never, I never, no, no, I'm, de I'm responding to your whole no, portion. I, I, about I never said that. So you're not because my only argument you was ju you just said that RNA forming on clay and information being formed in that manner. What yes, but I never said anything about the origin of life. I never said anything I, about I, the I, RNA I, world. So okay, all I, my only argument was I, RNA forms Tom, on clay. Tom, which is let people finish sentences. Okay. Y yes, you have to actually address what I'm I saying. I am addressing. If you let me have commas and clauses, then maybe I'll address your statements before you well, interrupt. No, me. you're not. You, you were addressing something yes, I didn't I say. That's why I was stopping you. So you I'm so getting. I didn't I'm, say anything about the I'm respond, of life Actually, Tom, I'm responding to your whole argument about information existing all over the place, and there not being a distinction between things that be are non-random and ultimately what? prescribe outcomes. What I never versus. Said that. So, so again, all I said was I am creating a separation between of your argument of that all this information all over the and all these different things, right? You said that, correct? Uh, yes. Information and what I am there. stating is that the non-random information that results in an outcome, there's a differentiation between that sort of information, which is what is required for life's ultimate ex ex existence. Again, I, I'm not following because you said okay, information. Okay, let, me, okay, let, me, that, let me break it down for you. Well, let me try to explain it, to you why I'm not following. So you said information that leads to an outcome is what requires is what what is required for life or something like that. Well, information it, 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 that leads to an outcome is like two rocks hitting each other. That's no, information no, 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 that leads no, to an okay. outcome. Not in the context of biology and what is recognized in the context of the genetic code, which, as I argued at the very beginning, is a fundamental requirement for all observed forms of life. I, I'm still I'm still not following what you're saying because in biology, in all of the academic non pseudoscience fields, and in physics, the information is exactly like the two rocks hitting each other. So I'm not sure what the distinction you're making. That is, is. okay. That, that that's a very ignorant statement because that is How absolutely so? not what is uh, uh, so? stated in many many papers. Uh, oh no! It literally is like I can the paper defining information in academic fields in biology is Shannon information theory in a paper he published in 1956. I think it was mm -hmm. maybe 58, where it defines information as a contrast between entropy. I can actually give you the equation, and it has nothing to do with intelligence. There's no reference. Shannon was in fact an atheist, so not surprising. Um, and information is again just a process. It's a stochastic system. It doesn't have anything to do with minds. It doesn't matter whether it's intelligently designed or not that's not a part of the definition of information in any academic field ever as far as i know uh okay so apparently you're not very familiar with biosemiotics but uh which has been changing that but there's also been quite a what? few papers recently changing changing what? that uh just saying that there's no distinction between uh, what is happening in the uh in terms of biology versus two rocks slamming together against each other for example here's one from uh uh, Abel and Trevor's uh, cause and effect physical determinism, in other words, cannot account for the programming of sequence dependent biofunction. There's paper from the. Do, do you have any in actually academic papers, like journals, yeah. not not pseudoscience journals? Uh, well, <laughs> okay, so you want royal, you want some Royal Society? Sure. Yes. Okay. Cool. Let's do that then. Okay. 
This drives us immediately to the conclusion that the DNA in organisms functions as information and that the internal DNA dependent dynamics of cells embody functional information processing, that is computation. DNA based molecular biological computation can be said to control, perhaps even direct, the entire panoply of biochemical events occurring in cells. Yeah, I agree with all of that. So, okay. Okay, so is it your position then that the information in the software, the source code that is enabling us to have this debate right now, is it your assertion that there is no difference between that type of information and two rocks slamming together? No, information as defined in Chen, information theory is a change in entropy. So no, 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 I, 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 no, I'm asking you from a, not from a purely philosophical perspective, it's in your opinion. Philosophical. I, I, I'm asking you a direct question. I Do you it. think there is any difference in the origin of, origin of the information that is required for this conversation to be happening right now? Uh, sure. Yeah. The origin of the information is different, but the information is not different. It's, they're still both just information. What is, what is required for the origin of the information that is enabling us to have this conversation? Um, electricity. Why? No, what's the original source origin of the source code? Humans designing machines. Okay. And what do in, humans have to have in order to do that? Uh, minds. Okay. So if... What enables us to have this conversation requires minds. And the genetic code has if then else functions. Well, no, that's had, not that, that's, that are not that are not purely as a result no. of baseline chemical reactions. Well, they are. That's if then statements are not required. Minds are not required to create those. Those happen in nature all the time. In fact, there's a certain kind of fungus that has tons of those, has no mind. At all, it, it no, no, no. Its own. but it has the source code that enables the if-then functions. So you just said that a biologically existing uh, there are non that already crystals, has crystals. that already ha no no the crystals do crystals have if-then else statements. Yes, no, they do not. Yes, they do. That's a proven fact. We can demonstrate that in like five seconds. They so, have they have sequence. They do not have non-random pattern formation. Yes, they it, do. That's literally what a crystal means. It's a non-random pattern formation. That's literally what a crystal is, non-random pattern formation. <laughs> okay. Like what? Or, okay. So do you even understand how the syntax, semantics, and pragmatics works in DNA? Yes or no? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by those terms because those are not, not terms used in biology as much. Those are kind of abstractions. Okay, so, so there, there's no. plenty of so I guess you actually haven't read as many papers as you think you have because I've, there's, I've, more I've than a, there's more than a few that discuss the detailed uh, semantics, uh, syntax, and pragmatics. I mean, yeah, yes, but those are not technical terms. Those don't exist in biology. Those are abstractions, like saying that. Like there's there's a that there. Yes, yes there is. <laughs> it's it's not actually a term in biology to refer to a specific process. It is an abstraction of a set of processes like a heap, like that is a heap. A heap isn't actually a thing that is defined in physics. It's just, it's a collection oh, of oh, stuff. Okay, well, I, I think I think you need to go back and read oh, some I, I know this for a fact. Because, I, know this no, no, I, don't, I don't think you do because I there do, are I do. I have to many it. papers specifically on the context of the linguistics and the semantics and the pragmatics. And there was a paper in 2015, I think, from uh, yes, the yes, Royal Society all of that. where they None specifically that. talked about the programming aspects yes. and not from a figurative perspective, but a literal one that is engaged by the cell as a whole. I, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. So the term syntax and semantics- I, I of, understand what you're, no, I understand no, you're, what you're clearly, trying to say. Clearly not. So, so no, I when, clearly do. Clearly and I know you're not. trying to circumvent clearly, this. You're no, trying to no, circumvent I'm this. I'm directly trying to answer. So when you use the term syntax and semantics in biology, it is an analogous term to refer to a set of processes in what the DNA does, but it is not itself a collection of them. It's an abstraction. There isn't, you're not going to be like syntax in biology and it's not going to come up with a set of biological functions. It's not a deliberate thing in biology. It's an abstraction of so a what collection. Is it, what, what is a codon? What is a codon? Yeah. I have no idea. What is a codon? A codon is a triplet of base pairs that is equal to a amino acid after the translation process. The syntax I'm referring to, which is clearly and very detailedly researched and delineated in genetics, is all of the codon sequences that result in the uh, 
amino acid translation process. Now, do you even know how genes are expressed? Do you know the process by which wait, it wait, is? Wait, 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 go back. So again, syntax in the sentence you just said is again an abstraction. It's not a deliberate thing in biology. If you Google yes, it. Yes, it is. No, 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 it's not. That's not how the word syntax works. Yes, like, it does. In, yeah, in this context, yes, it does. No, that's literally wrong. So um, just the word syntax, what it means is it is a relationship between systems. It's like a, a connected system or order, a union of things, but it isn't a deliberate this union. This union is not a syntax. A syntax is just an abstraction of connected systems and unions. It's not, it doesn't refer to a particular kind of a thing. It's an abstraction by definition. I don't know what you're even Actually, saying. I think, I think you may need to Google that, man. A syntax. I, I'm looking of, at it right now. A syntax. set of rules for for or an analysis of the syntax of a language, the branch of linguistics that deals with syntax. Now, in the context of a the genetic code, your syntax is the 64 of different possible codon combinations, which equal the 20 amino acids. That is the syntax. Then you have semantics aspects of that, which are executed via methylation and other epigenetic um, factors, which alter the outcome of, of the core data. Now, in the context of a code, what in what is your definition of what a, a code is and how it is actually processed? What are the components that are required for a code? I'm just going to go with the Google definition. So you could, what is your argument here? I just asked you a question. What is? I'm going to go with the Google a, definition. You want me to Google it for you? Code. No, I want to know what code. you think it is. I don't. I go with the Google definition. I'm just going. Code is whatever Google defines it as. I don't actually know a strict definition for it. Code definition. System of words, letters, figures, or other symbols to substitute other words, letters, and etc. Especially okay. for the purposes of okay. secrecy. Okay. So, so in and the reason Program I'm asking. Instructions. So the reason I'm asking you, what you, if you actually have any knowledge of biology in spite of what you keep claiming i don't know um do you even have any do you actually know how is there an argument coming are, yeah there is and we're setting Where a stage do you it? know do you know how a gene is i'm not going to answer any more do you know questions because it's a waste of time show me the argument like i know more than you about literally everything so just just tell me the argument i want to know if you know if you don't you the process. tell me what the argument is tell me what okay. the argument is all right so for a gene to be expressed there are a plethora of different functions and nanomachines that are required for it to happen. But in the transcription process, and going back to Shannon information theory, what's the steps? You have uh, encode, uh, messenger channel, uh, decode, right? And there's two different syntax uh, that are required on both sides for the decoding process. So on the DNA co genetic code perspective, you have codons. It is then transcribed into mRNA. It is then I'm taken still, to a I'm ribosome. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point, bro. Just shut up and listen. I'm still not saying it, 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 it is then translated into something that is more, not more okay. gibberish. This is not gibberish. This is what actually is a argument. argument. This is one of the greatest enigmas of biology. So let yes, me finish. Yes, the something point. we don't know is let called me, an me, argument let, from let, ignorance. No. So I know I know there's lots of stuff we don't know, but that's not evidence for design. How did you get this to design? I, I'm I'm getting there. If you'll stop interrupting. You've been like five minutes. I win. It takes me 30 seconds to articulate an argument. Okay, so arguing existence is a little bit more complicated than 30 Not seconds. Really? No. Okay. Well, if your if your mind is that narrow, then no wonder you're still. Well, no, no. I, I can take your argument and just rephrase it in like 30 seconds. You, you stuff is complicated. We can't explain it. Therefore, design. That's your no. argument. No. Okay. Let's rephrase. So you're this. in the stuff is complicated part right now. Could the Morse code exist without a mind? Yes or no? Sure. It doesn't exist with a mind. It exists as a piece of paper. Like, what do you oh. mean exist? It's lit, it's a code. It's it's a process. It's like you input one thing, output another thing. The Enigma machine or some some other externalist oh, machine can can have this without a mind. Like computers have processes without minds. They they can exist without a mind. Yeah, clearly. but they had to have a mind to create the logic rules, the syntax, semantics, and the pragmatics of the source code that enables them to function. So, are you saying that computers could exist without minds? Yes, they do. It's called biology. So you just admitted that biology has computational abilities. Which I never requires... said it didn't. So it, do all computers have require logic rules? Uh, everything in the universe requires logic rules. Okay. So, but you're saying that if then else and temporal based variables can exist without any kind of 
intelligence being required. Is that your position? Yeah, obviously. I mean, crystals have those, rocks have those, gravity has those, all the laws of nature have those. So you're saying that rocks can somehow execute other things that are based on different time ba uh, time requirements. Is that what you're saying? Yes, crystals grow at a specific time intervals. They don't instantly. No, I'm saying, they, they, you're, you're saying they can. You're saying that rocks can build other things. Yes, by, them, crystals, by themselves. That's what by, crystals no, by do. They, they build. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk about basic rocks. Can yes. they build things crystals other than the, other than copying themselves? Can they build other things? Yes. By they, themselves, what? Y yes, the rocks when they collaborate with other minerals build new things. That's what rocks because rocks is just a combination of minerals and so if you focus on a specific kind of mineral it builds that new mineral if it comes into a different chemical reaction it builds a different kind of a mineral i mean this is not hard like if, if you take a proton and it hits a neutron it builds an atom if you take a proton put it next to another proton they repel that's an if-then statement if neutron build proton if proton repel that's an if-then statement and you're saying that they controlled whether or not those protons hit. No, they didn't okay, control so that's the, anything. So that is the key variable to what we're talking about in terms of what's happening in biology. Well, biology is the same. Biology is just, again, a versus chemical Versus uncontrolled process. actions. Biology is the same. It's just an uncontrolled chemical process. Like, I don't know what you're saying here. You, you think it's uncontrolled? Yes, it's literally just a what, chemical what, process. What's it, what's it, what, is an in, what is an enzyme? It's an enzyme. What an enzyme, enzyme is an enzyme. So and, and what, what do they and what do they do? It they regular, alter they alter yeah. chemical reaction outcomes. Yes, just like any chemical. That's what all chemicals do. So, like if you add uh, bleach to a chemical reaction, it'll make a different chemical reaction. It'll alter the chemical reaction. So physics does control things like that, just like in any chemical reaction is controlled by the chemicals in the reaction. So yeah, there's I, not I, nothing spectacular about that. Yeah, so, but, but again, still not, still they're, being, they're being you're breaking up again separately from a chemical. Say it again. You're they're, breaking. Up. Am I still breaking up? Uh, say something. Okay, so I think that we need to turn this back to a basic well, I, not, so biology no. lesson in the context of. Well, you still haven't given uh, an argument for, yet. Biology doesn't you, help you, you at all. You, so. you, keep deny, you keep denying the fundamental pieces of what is being questioned in biology on a what, what regular basis, which is that deterministic chemistry does not explain biology. That uh, is No, that's the consensus in biology. The deterministic chemistry does? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Then, yeah, you are clearly yes. uninformed. If you think that purely deterministic chemistry... Okay, do you know what a microRNA is? Uh, again, so get to the argument. I can just say deterministic forces are the cause of sensibly everything in biology. That's the consensus. Like just Googling, looking at the paper I just listed. Um, okay, one so day going back to someone will fill a container with pretty okay. little chemicals and keep it under the right conditions and watch life emerge. That experiment will be done. Yes. I'm talking about what is it being observed in the real world. That's a scientist doing these experiments. What are you talking about? Nucleotide and eventually amino acid sequences are both physiodynamically iner indeterminate, inert. This what? leads to deterministic chemistry no longer being able to explain no biological outcomes. That. So, again, so no one in biology accepts that. Okay, I just argument? literally read that from a paper. Okay, still not, so, not accepted in biology. So, can you give me an argument? Okay, so let's go back to uh, microRNAs. So you, no, since you have, I mean, don't understand talking what talking about understand biology, I'm going to help you because I can just Google the consensus in biology is natural so done. So okay, so no. anything in biology doesn't help you. So give me an argument. What is your argument? You haven't presented a single argument yet. You just kept keep babbling about different topics in biology, which no, I'm, I've researched in the past. So I don't need to research them again because I know they also lead to naturalism. But you haven't given an argument. Like, what is your argument? Okay, Tom. So you can just sit here in denial, and I am. I don't have to. I, haven't, I, haven't I, don't, have to, I, don't, I don't have to go along with your position of going with a majority. We're, I'm arguing, putting forth whether or not there is reasonable conclusions for intelligent design. So yes, I'm in spite, so, oh, in spite so of, in spite of your stunningly ignorant uh, denial, of, I'm ignorant isn't an argument. What is the argument? If you'll stop interrupting me, I'll actually finish the sentence. I've been waiting for like 15 minutes, and you haven't said anything yet. Like, where is the argument? 
Tom, is it is it your opinion that what what is is my opinion an argument now? Like, what is the argument? Say say like premise can, one. We're, 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 I'm we're having a discussion. Okay. Well, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I don't to, have to listen, Tom. I don't have to follow your structure. Well, okay? yeah, I'm trying to understand the context. I, I'm not, I'm not your little your little boy over here. That you can yes, just that's that's, that's great. You, so, you need to actually phrase we, the sentences in a way that they make sense to the person you're having a conversation with. And right now, I can ask you like, what is your favorite color? But that's not relevant to the conversation. So you need to explain your argument. How is how, make an argument that is relevant to the conversation so I can understand it? Um, are you? That's are, what I'm asking um, for. Are you? Is it? Is it your position? that there is nothing that is impossible to occur by chance and determinism. Uh, unless it's a logical contradiction, that's just by definition what possible means. So you are saying that there that all the things of technology that we enjoy, you are you suggesting that they can all exist by pure chance? Sure, but it's so improbable it wouldn't happen, but it's possible. Okay, so the improbability of life existing is beyond the total number of chemical reactions that have happened in the observed universe. No, it's not. Okay. okay. Actually, so, the, the argument is that given the known natural processes, the probability of life is that, which I agree with. I mean, we don't know all of the natural processes. So given the known natural processes, the life occurring using the known natural processes is that small. But that isn't all natural processes. That's just the known natural processes. Just like 10,000 years ago, if we said, given the known natural processes, the probability of producing lightning is zero. It's because we didn't know the natural processes that produced lightning. But that doesn't mean that all natural processes have a 0% chance of producing lightning, only the ones we know about. So I grant that given all of the natural processes we know about, those working together to produce life is extremely small. I agree. So are you suggesting that even though the vast majority of chemists are in agreement that purely random abiogenesis from a chemistry perspective, not just based on what we know, because we know a hell of a lot about chemistry at this point of what is possible from a uh, bi binding perspective. Wait, 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 so wait. if they, are, like, eh, said, I, I'm, I'm finishing sentences. Stop you interrupting. Said, bro. You said not based off of what we know. Like everything is always based off of what we know. I don't know what you mean by that. You I said think. not only based off of what we know, chemists know that. I don't know. You keep interrupting me, man. I probably hadn't finished my. Uh, right. I'm asking for clarification. My, I, I work with complex clauses, <laughs> and you keep interrupting me in the middle of clauses. And as I'm sure you know, that semantically that can make a different variation to the outcome, right? Well, yeah, but if you don't make sense in the first clause, like the second clause doesn't make sense. Either. Well, the second clause is what make can make the first clause make sense. No, no, it can't. It's like by definitionally, if you if you say gibberish in one sentence, then adding more gibberish in the second one doesn't help. So, so I mean, you said if you don't know not, what the outcome is, you don't know if it's gibberish or not. You're making a pre you're making a pre assumption. You made you made a statement. You said okay. Anyway, using uh, things we no. don't know. But what do you mean using more stuff than what we know? Everything we do is based off of what we know. So how can we use stuff not based off of what we know? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're gonna have to go to uh, a response and rebuttals. Otherwise, I'm done with this conversation because I'm not somebody who doesn't even know what my end point is. And obviously has doesn't have enough knowledge of biology to actually have and have a reasonable conversation about this. So are we get let, let's go to. I mean, that sounds like you got your head up your ass because all I asked was is what do you mean by when you say we're going to use things not only what we know but also the, what we don't. I think, I think I said based on what we know. I may have broken up. I don't know. Oh, if, the, if, that, if you based on what we know, I'm okay with that. I grant that. Go. I for mean it. that's anyway. The you were you were saying that chemists are using what we know to. So anyway. Um, based on what we, we know about chemistry, and we know quite a bit, and at some point there is a root of what is possible, just based on on chemistry, right? There's only so many different ways things can bind and different processes that can be executed. Only and given since known we, things. Like there is, you can't say there's a base to what is possible given everything. There's only a base to what's possible given what we currently know. I, so. I, I understand that, but I'm the point I'm making is at some point there is a ultimate base of what is possible. Sure. Correct? Somewhere. Okay. Right. So anyway, the the point I'm making is there are quite a few folks who have in the origin of life research field that have 
or circling back around to the requirement of frozen accident being the only reasonable and plausible explanation because of what they now know extensively of chemistry is that the syntax requirements and the there have to exist and the proteins required for their execution the data execution is so stunningly improbable that it is no longer plausible to think they can happen purely by random chance granted but only given yeah. the things we know so that doesn't tell us anything. But again, that comes back to the point I made at the beginning a few minutes ago was at some point there is a root. And at yeah, some we're point, we're nowhere near that. Have, per you. Per everyone in science, because by definition, science doesn't give us access to that kind of information. It never says we're done and this is the root. It always says there could be. Right, which is more. why I go back to the things you kept interrupting me on is when we actually look at the observed outcome of what is life and the simultaneous processes that are required to be executed on the molecular level to result in the components that enable life to exist. Unless you are willing to conclude that all of these things can happen simultaneously when the improbability of even one of them happening at all, let alone all of them happening simultaneously, and the whole term is co-evolution these days, is so mind-bendingly improbable that you're suspending the plausibility component of what usually constitutes a scientific theory. Like, hey, you know, yeah, cool. There's something that's, uh, it, there's a pro there's a minuscule probability this could happen. However, when you look at all of these other variables in context, it's not plausible. So let's go on to something else. But in the context of what's plagued academia and people such as yourself, you are all looking for ways to avoid an intelligent agent being the ultimate root when it actually solves huge amounts of the conundrums that people are facing, which is things such as like in nanotechnology. Now, I don't think anybody would actually think that the nanotech that's being created by synthetic chemists would ever happen by accident and without an intelligent agent directing it. And those technologies are pathetic in complexity compared to the components that enable life to exist. So if you wouldn't think that the ones that humans are building would ever happen by accident and without intelligent agents, why is it reasonable to conclude that ones that are exponentially more complex did? Testable predictions, that's why. So the first thing is that um, intelligent design doesn't actually solve anything. That's why it's not accepted in science. We don't actually, we're not trying to avoid an intelligent designer if it was a hypothesis that made testable predictions, we'd accept it like any other. That's all you have to do to be valid in science is make testable predictions. So the reason we go with abiogenesis is because it makes testable predictions. We can say if um, the origin of life came about by natural processes, we would expect that the precursors to life like DNA and RNA would come about through natural processes. And then, oh, look, we discovered a natural process that produces RNA. Ah, that's a testable prediction that we confirmed. But we don't have any of those in, of intelligent design. And so it doesn't actually solve anything. We can imagine an intelligent designer doing it, but it doesn't solve any problems because to be a solution, you need to make testable predictions. So I can imagine a leprechaun um, knocking that cup over, but that isn't the solution just because I don't know what knocked the cup over. To be a solution, I'd have to make a testable prediction and say, well, if it was a leprechaun, then we would see blah, 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 and then discover that and be correct. Then it would be a solution. But without that testable prediction, it's not a solution, it's just an assertion. So intelligent design is just an assertion until you make testable predictions, which is why we go with abiogenesis, because it makes testable predictions, which have been confirmed hundreds, thousands of them every year in papers all over the world. That's why we go with that one and not design. Now, we're not trying to avoid a designer. We don't actually care if there's a designer or not. You just need to provide evidence, which is testable predictions, and you haven't. Okay, so that was a nice dodge of what, what was, uh, always going back to the detestable predictions and things of that nature. Um, that we're talking about that? a deduction based on the evidence of technology. So the evidence I'm putting forth is that we have coding, uh, which nobody in their right mind would actually, and it's just a real, relatively established premise in linguistics that outside of the code that makes up our genetic code, uh, no other syntax, semantics, and pragmatics have ever been devised by a non-intelligent agent. And in spite of the fact that you kept interrupting me in the context of codons and the syntax there, 
Um, there is a syntax. It's a well-established premise. And when it's being translated, and the process is called translation, uh, the codon is being read through uh, one codon at a time. And the amino acid, which is being leveraged to in protein synthesis, never chemically interacts with that codon. So you have a two arbitrary values that require a middleman translator. So if there is not, and they've been desperately trying to find this and have finally concluded, and if you want to go research it, feel free, the, there is no chemical explanation for how the ribosome knows it's the correct amino acid other than computation being executed. Right. There's lots of things we don't know in biology. That's not evidence for anything. It's just an argument from ignorance. I mean, yes. no, there's whole, no, there's a whole thing called biological computation and they conclude yes. that there is given known process. There's computation being executed there. It's being, yes, I grant, I grant that. I agree with that. So, but there is the, being part information. I, the part I disagree with is that there is no chemical solution. That's false. It's, there's no known chemical solution. None of the known natural processes can explain this. We agree. Like everyone in biology agrees with this. We don't have a solution yet. Otherwise it would, be and, they all, and they also agree there's immaterial information housed inside of it. Information and, is an abstract. So all information is is physical in biology and physics. Information is literally a physical thing. No, in, in actually it's not. There's translational pausing, which is temporal-based controls. Information is physical. Information is physical. Physics. Step one. Yeah, physics is information right there. Physics is information is a process of particles. It's, it's physical. So yeah. in, in right. physics and biology, information is, is physical. It's not a it's not an okay. abstract thing. Okay. So are you saying then that there is no information that is immaterial? Um, not in physics or biology, no. No, no, I'm talking about in the real world. Is there information well, that is immaterial? Using the abstract no, answer the question, yes. is there information that is immaterial? I am answering the question. Using the abstract made up definition by humans, yes. Using physics, no, it doesn't exist in physics or biology. Okay, so is the information that is currently housed on your hard drive, is that physical or immaterial? Physical. No. It's literally on a hard drive. A hard drive means it's made of stuff. It's literally physical. Yeah, I, I, the information, the information. Okay, if you write on, let, let's break this down. If you write with an ink pen on a piece of paper. Yeah. There was a chemical process that bound the ink to the, pen, to the paper, yes. right? Yeah is the information that is contained in the words, is that physical or immaterial? It's physical because the information is actually contained in our no, brain. The, medi the, the medium we... is physical. The right, right. information itself can be translated by something that's physical, but the information itself is not. Well, no, the translation is the information. So the translation process of how to take a specific combination of letters and make it into something meaningful is contained within the brain. So that's actually physical. In the okay, well, you have a extraordinarily materialistic mindset, and there's a huge percentage of the planet and academia that would disagree with you in the context of information being immaterial. Um, uh, I don't think so. I'm looking at the Phil Survey's paper in philosophy, it's about 70% are materialist physicalists, then about neuroscience, it's about 80 or 90% are physicalists, and physics is about 70%. I don't know, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, maybe 30% maybe is a large percent. I'm okay, okay, I'll grant that. Okay, so I, I, let's just put this all into uh, into different context here. So, um, you it is your argument and your position that information can that is controlled and, and prescriptive and results in variable outcomes based on foreknowledge of the requirements. You are saying that that is a completely naturalist uh, outcome that does not require intelligence. Is that correct? Um, well, that's my hypothesis, but I wouldn't assert that. So my assertion would be is there is something we don't know. We don't know what caused. No, 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 no. That's not, not what I asked. I asked in the context of technologies that we currently uh, engage in and logic rules and things that require foreknowledge of the outcome in order and, and require the logic rules to have been implemented prior to the execution. Are you saying that it can be accomplished purely by natural processes and does not require intelligence? Well, no, I'd say those do require intelligence because, but I'd say intelligence are physical. So, so you're saying, computers okay. require intelligence as far as we know. So Okay. So know. my point is that if in life, 
temporal based controls that require variable modifications in order to execute a function exist in our bodies and are essential to life existing. But you just stated that in, in, in another context, that would require intelligence. No, I said computers require intelligence. Like temporal based transitions of information can happen without computers. You don't need computers. No, I, I said functions and logic rules. It, it doesn't matter what, whether it's computer or anything else. Well, I'm talking again, about the, if I have to set up <clears throat> multiple variables, right, for a machine, so you gotta have multiple variables and they can be modified based on time-based components and, and stress-related and external uh, functions. But I have to have them accounted for prior to those variables coming into play in yep. order to have a successful outcome. Yep. Did I have to have foreknowledge of those potential variables when I built it in the first place? No, because we can see that happening in physics all the time. I'm talking about things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm talking about real-world stuff. We do experience physics on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm not talking about things from a physics perspective and theoretical. I'm talking about real-world physical components and machines that we deal with in the real world. If I, um, all those variables, would I've had to have foreknowledge and have predicted the requirements before I built the technology? Again, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what you're saying here because human design things were human design. Yes. But the temporal systems that you're describing, those can happen as human design things or naturally in physics. They, those, the temporal information processing that can have altered effects based off of the time or however you phrase it can happen in physics without human design. So the human design ones were definitely human designed. I'm talking about, mm -hmm. in, contr I'm talking about in controlled environments um, that have specifically prescribed outcomes. I've, I'm not sure what you mean by that. So when you talk about a temporal system that can process information and react at a certain time period, you have a certain outcome. That happens in physics all the time without any humans. I'm, I'm talking about technology. Yeah, human design things like technology are all human right. design. And what I'm saying is that you, if you're agreeing that for human design technologies to be able to have those outcomes, and the, and the point I'm making is if the exact same type of logic rules and physical machines, in this context, nano machines, and their functional outcomes have the exact same logic rules that we would apply to any other form of human technology. And we agree they would require that those things in the human world require intelligence. Well, no, Why? that's the part we disagree on. So I agree that human designed things were human designed, but the information behind them does not need to be human designed. So there are information of the if then statements, as you put it, or the time interval statements, all of that can exist naturally without any human design. In human design, they only exist with human design, but those same things, the same kinds of processes, the if then statements and the information processing exist in things humans didn't design also. So Yes, I mean, car cars and computers aren't going to pop out into nature because there's no natural process to make those. But the information used to produce cars and information in computers and things is just made used by nature to do other things. Like the logic systems, that's again, that's a part of reality. It's just a part of the universe. Everything in the universe has a logical system to it. We choose to build cars, whereas nature builds universes and crystals and solar systems and tornadoes. Okay, so the reason I'm talking about this in terms of biology is, and this is why I was asking your knowledge of things as simple as gene expression. For a gene to be expressed, it requires multiple nanomachines, not just pure chemical reactions. They are physical nanomachines. Yes, and I you, agree. Okay, so one of which spins at 100,000 revolutions per second. I agree. Uh, un undo. I agree. No, that, no, the flagellum, that's totally different than we're talking about. Okay. That's not, that's nothing to do with DNA transcription. Okay. But so, yes, I agree. It's complicated. The, lots of machines involved, lots of coding. Yes. Okay. So if the, if those machines are required for the expression and the execution of the sequence information that is housed in the DNA, and it requires additional other separate components to all work in unison to have the desired outcome. And there are known things such as like the chaperone proteins, which actually alter what would be the normal chemical reaction outcome, both physically and chemically alter what would be just the standard undirected outcome. 
10 minutes. How can you take the position that those types of executions in biology are any different than the things that we're talking about on the macro level and things of human design technology? Because of testable prediction. It's like if we have any of that, that's literally the answer to your question. Like, why would I conclude that the information and the complexity of the cell is not human designed as opposed to being, and why do I prefer uh, natural processes? Well, the reason is because testable predictions. If we have two hypotheses, like what knocked over that cup? Maybe it was a squirrel, maybe it was a bird. Uh, and we want to conclude, well, which hypothesis is the one I should believe? Well, they're both hypotheses that could potentially explain the cup knocked over. Well, which one should we prefer is the one that makes testable predictions. If it makes testable predictions, we can confirm in a lab, and the other one can't, well, we prefer the one with the predictions. And the one that makes predictions is the abiogenesis one. Like We make tons of them all the time, and they're confirmed. Intelligent design makes none of them. Like It's definitely possible that the cell could be designed. That's not impossible at all. Of course it could be designed, but is there any reason to believe that? No, we're just making an argument from analogy. You have a good hypothesis, but if you don't have any evidence to back it up, then it's just a hypothesis. So you need, again, some way to verify in the world external to our imagination that this thing is in fact a designed as opposed to caused by natural processes. We have that for the natural processes. We have the testable predictions. We have nothing for intelligent design other than arguments from analogy, which are, again, just mental. They're, they don't actually show there's, because to count as evidence, again, you have to show there's a difference between imaginary and real. Just using okay, so, imaginary so analogy. Real, so real yeah. machines are, right, is evidence. And the right. sequential code base that requ is required for their ex uh, existence is real evidence. A code base in a in a language that has syntax, semantics, semantics, and pragmatics is real evidence. Now, whether or not you want to accept that it could all just exist through natural processes is up to you. But the improbabilities are so mind bending. But the imp implausibility of a code base which requires nano machines in order for it to be executed, that, which are now being agreed need to have existed simultaneously and to have quote unquote co, co evolved in order for, it's the ultimate chicken and egg problem. The, if, if you're not going to extrapolate that out to the most complex things that, I mean, they're now coming to the realization that the cell has machine based machine learning capabilities yep. and is being able to write new functions on the fly, but yep. is using nanotech that makes the best things that we've come up with look like a joke. But yeah, none of that's evidence. Those are all observations. Those aren't evidence. For yeah, observation, to... observations of basic evidence. Just because we can't recreate it in the, in the lab, that actually speaks to how complicated it is and why the probability of non-controlled chemical uh, functions and executions and processes being the result of, I mean, that's, that's a joke, man. To actually, yeah. to actually think that you can think that all you want, and you talk about you know living in imaginary land, that is living in the imaginary land of yes, it's a hypothesis. That's how hypotheses work. The difference is is that a hypothesis of an imaginary being doing it, which we have no basis of, versus a hypothesis of a probabilistic natural process, which means at least it has some probability of doing it. The some probability is better because it actually has some demonstrable capabilities in the real world, whereas the imaginary being has none. Like saying that it was designed by. A designer is no different than saying it was designed by a magical pixie unicorn. There's no evidence to any of those things. You have to actually provide the evidence. I mean, you said it's complex. Yes, it's complex. Is that okay, so, ag no. so again, and I, I, let's not go down the philosophical rabbit hole of the watchmaker analogy, but if, I mean, I, I really don't understand how, let's say we have a time, uh, time machine, we go back and you left your cell phone and somebody found it a zillion years later, are they actually going to think that your cell phone was not designed by an intelligent agent? Well, the correct analysis is to say, we don't know what caused this thing. Is it a designer or is it natural processes? When, when, when you look at, if you took apart a cell phone that you found and nobody knew what they were and you looked at it, would you, do you actually think that people looking at a cell phone Ugh. and it taking it apart. The cell phone, we know, we know about, cell phones are designed. So pick it no, 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 an we abstract know. object. I'm, I'm talking if we go back in time. No, 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 no I understand what and, you're saying. One. No, 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 that's not going abstract. Strictly, go. strictly reasoning to use a cell phone. So if we came up to a complex object, Do you don't you know. That, no, that a, a, a sane we know a cell phone human. was designed. So I'm going to say a cell phone was designed. But if we come up to an object that we do not know was designed, it's a complex object. Anyone who includes a design is an idiot. 
The only reasonable conclusion is, is we don't know what proved, what caused this. And so we should make hypotheses. Was it design? Was it natural processes? And then we make predictions. And we say, if it's natural processes, we would expect to see X, Y, Z. If it was design, we expect to see A, B, C. And we look to see which ones we discover. And the ones we discover, that's the correct hypothesis. Okay. So again, so again if I dropped a printed out piece of paper with the we already know source, design, hang on, so with the source to... no with the source code of YouTube's uh, in front of you you don't know what the you don't necessarily know what that language is but would you immediately conclude that it was written by somebody I already brain? know it's designed because I know already know it's a human design thing okay so if so everything again, else that we so would come again you'd have to pick an example of something that isn't at, at, at some point what well, you're you're the one that's denying that anything else outside of what we already know and we have observed and seen somebody design is the only thing that class it can be reasonably classified as having been designed by an intelligent agent. The right. point I'm mean, so what I'm saying is that if you are creating a set of blinders and refusing and it's like, okay, uh, we have no idea who invented the first wheel. We know it was a human. However, we didn't see them. Therefore that human mustn't have existed. That intelligent agent that no. created the first wheel didn't exist. No. I'm saying it's the equivalent of. No. No, again, so so again, my argument is that if we come to an object that we do not know whether it was designed or not designed, the correct thing is to know, I don't know what caused this. It could be designed. It may not be designed. And then make predictions. Whichever one's predictions are correct, that's the one we go with. So we don't we don't presume I'm it's pretty, one I'm or the pretty, other. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure at the beginning of this, you just said we just need to dismiss any possibility of intelligent design. No, absolutely and not. I, I agree the, that intelligent design is possible. It's just there's no evidence for it. And the point I'm making is, again, would the genetic code is a code. It yes, has well, false. Genetic every code aspect. is complicated. Okay. We don't know how it no, no, it's not complicated. It is a code that also is complicated. Yes, it is a complicated it code. Multiple, it has multiple variable variable options. Yes. It allows for temporal controls. It yes, allows none of that's evidence. Functions. Yes, none of that's evidence. That's just here's something we can't explain yet. So if what something caused is, it? Okay. And the point is that again, comparing it to a computer code is an argument. In no other, in, so no, it's not evidence. It's not actually. It's. Are, are you familiar with translational pausing, which has been classified it's, it's in the terminology? So no, no, again, no, no, To be evidence, you no. can't just compare it to other things. You need to Tempo, make no, predictions. Temporal pausing make predictions. was classified as a computer code in for uh, frontiers and so again to be evidence you can't just compare it to other things that's an argument from analogy no, no, analogy if it, no if it, if in it order to be evidence all of predictions if it can okay and the predictions are that it follows all of the requirements to be classified as a computer code that's an observation we already know that to be a prediction you have to predict something we don't know so again are you saying that computer codes can create themselves no i ne never said that Okay, so you just it's said I compared it into something that is classified as a computer code. Yes. But even though Peter You're breaking up again. Wait a, wait a second, you're breaking up again. So you're breaking up, you're breaking up. Pause. Pause for a minute. Somehow this one did through natural process. Uh, okay, you broke up. Could you repeat that? Okay, so you just said that computer codes wouldn't create themselves. Yes. And even though I just told you that the temporal pausing redundancy uh, double syntax um, that so is... DNA isn't a computer code. It's a code. It's not a computer code. Okay. And as I was trying to explain to you, the yes, it has been considered a programming language and a computer code. And it's also been... Programming language, yes. It's not a computer code. A computer code is literally a code for computers. So okay. It's... Actually, cybernetics was originally founded on the... Uh, what they were seeing in biology and the genetic code. So um, that's actually not true. It's actually a computer program. Computer code is um, a program or code set of instructions forming a computer program, which is included by a computer. Done. So, can, so again, so can, a, can a computer, what it, the logic rules that enable a computer. You're breaking up again. You don't have to be. You're, you're breaking up. Wait, wait. You, you broke up again. Repeat yeah, that. I heard you. I'm going to get on my phone. Hang on. I'll be back. Okay. Well, we've got five minutes left on the discussion anyway. So once uh, John gets back, I'll uh, start the clock up again for five last minutes. And looks like we got um, lots of good questions from the audience. So we will, um, well, we can jump into quick uh, closings, just wrap it up a couple of minutes, and then yeah. we'll have a good uh, Q&A. 
That was good. Let me get some water. Awesome. Take your time. Yeah, I got a question, I guess. I mean, I mean, one was sent to me personally, so I'll have to probably uh, ask that question. It was from, let's see here. Jesus paid it all, so yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Braze. Look at Tom's freaking chair there, gosh. He could debate for 10 hours without a sore back or sore neck with that thing. Luckily, we've, uh, uh, John, and, and luckily your audio really only had a couple times of uh, uh, messing up there. So for, for I'd say 95% of the debate, it, it all came through well. So uh, no worries, John, you might not have... Um, Heard us while you're gone, but we got five minutes left on the clock for the discussion. So once you guys start going at it again, I'll uh, start the clock. We'll jump into really quick closings and then a QA, and a okay? Okay, so uh, I think where you left off was um, the information required to make a computer code, like the if-then statements, is also required in DNA. And my position is, is those if-then statements also are in everything in the universe. And so, you know, you can make them with natural processes. You don't need to design them to make if-then statements. Okay. So as I think actually where we left off was uh, I'd ask you if uh, computer codes could create themselves. You said no. Yeah. And then I class said that it is being... Actually, they might be able to in the future. They can't yet. Well, yeah, then they re but the way they would come in in the future would be through machine learning uh, capabilities of AI, which is re but the requirement for those things to exist is intelligence. So prior to that being being an option, just like in quantum computing, I, I doubt you would ever conclude that quantum computers uh, could create themselves. So uh, I, at least I hope not, because if you do, then that's a whole other debate. But um, hey, where I'm going with all this is the all of the foundational pieces of what constitutes a programming language and the ultimate outcome are embodied in the genetic code in a variety of ways that are ex significantly superior to the best thing that we have ever come up with as humans. Well, sure. The requirements for a programming language are logic, and logic is just a function of the universe. So well, yes. There, there's, there's, there's more to it than just logic, but what? there's literally everything in the computer. There's some okay syntax, semantics, pragmatics, which is all a part of logic. Okay, so earlier you couldn't tell me how the syntax applied to the genetic code, and it doesn't exist even though it does well, no, uh, syntax is a, is a conception so it means it is a unity or a relationship between things so there's a lots of different syntaxes in lots of different things including true the and it, but in terms of coding and programming there are very specific rules that are required and those rules are assigned by intelligent agents they're arbitrary sure. there's ar arbitrary sure. assignment so is arbitrary assignment of values are you saying that that is does not require intelligence no, the choices of what the values are and what the relationships are is arbitrary, but the possible relationships are not. Those are determined by logic. So we just choose between an argument. No, no, I, asked, I asked you, is, an, is, is intelligence, I didn't say whether you use logic or not. Of course you use logic. I asked if intelligence is required to assign the arbitrary values. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, you could just randomly assign them, but we do use Well, you could, but intelligence will be required to randomly assign them too, right? You have to have a random, a random generator. Which had to have been created by an intelligent agent, right? Well, no, random generators exist in nature to to specifically assign arbitrary two different sets of arbitrary values to be encoded, decoded, and trans and uh, sorry, encoded, uh, transmitted, and decoded. Yes, that exists in physics all the time, where arbitrary sets of values are selected for particles, and those are specifically read like entanglement at specific times and specific intervals. Those happen all the time in nature. Okay, if you're <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to equate quantum entanglement with uh, arbitrarily assigned uh, syntax yes. for coding? Yes, that's oh, literally what okay. it is. Okay, so you're, so you're saying that there is nothing- That's how quantum computers work. No, okay. I was talking, I was talking about quantum, yeah, you said quantum entanglement. The interesting- uh, Right. I just wanted to jump in, guys. We have one minute left on the clock. I'm not sure how you guys want to spend that last minute, but let's just wrap it up uh, and we'll we'll go right into some quick closings. 
Yeah, we can just go into the closings. That's fine. Yeah, if, if that's cool. I just didn't want to cut anyone off and, unless they had another point they wanted to make. But if you guys are happy with uh, how it's ended, we can jump into um, a couple closings. Why don't we uh, – who started? Uh, John, I you started. started. So why don't we hand it over to you, um, take some uh, a couple minutes just to wrap up uh, your thoughts, and then we'll go on to Tom. All right. So this debate, uh, if we can actually call it that, was another example of the tremendous effort made by T-Jump and many of the folks like him, but him especially, to circumvent any kind of real conversation and debate over the subject by shifting things around and trying to apply purely philosophical arguments to reality. And to try and explain and <laughs> things such as uh, codes, syntax, semantics, pragmatics, programming languages, and the different aspects of those principles that enable life to exist and nanotechnologies and robots and all different things that we have here as having no difference between that and two rocks coming together to me just exemplifies a strong effort to avoid truly contemplating whether or not it is a more logical and plausible conclusion that the evidence which people all going all the way back to Dawkins have said looks designed and just make sure you turn off that uh, rational portion of your brain. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to avoid uh, that conclusion. An interesting quote uh, uh, from a paper by, uh, I can't really pronounce these guys' names, V.A. Gusev and D. schultz Machik. The origin of the code is perhaps the most perplexing problem in evolutionary biology. The existing translational machinery is at the same time so complex, so universal, and so essential that it's hard to see how it could come up it could have come into existence or how life could have existed without it. And the irony of the paper I'm looking at right now directly below that is the uh, syntax, semantics and pragmatics charts and uh, all the logic rules uh, that they've outlined there. But uh, ultimately this, and I think people watching have to um, ask themselves this question is if you actually go down and actually look at the processes of biology and the things that we are now uh, recognizing that weren't even known 20 years ago, such as, Translational palsy, which you didn't even get into, literally acts as a 3D printing logic controls uh, for the ribosome and is embedded in the syntax of the codons, which both represent the amino acid needed and how it should be ultimately shaped and uh, the protein synthesis outcome should happen. We have things such as microRNAs, which can alter the outcome of literally thousands of different genes. And so you take the exact same data and then insert this and it has a different outcome. The list goes on and on of things that in any other context would be considered genius and have required incredible foreknowledge, foresight, and design capabilities. And yet are now being put forth as random occurrences that are capable of existing through purely natural processes. Ask yourself if that is a reasonable conclusion, and I encourage you to actually go and do research and look beyond the talking points that are put forth by so many who do not want you to even consider the premise of an intelligent agent. Thank you so much for that uh, concluding statement there, John. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, on to you, Tom. Take your time. Yeah, all right. So I'd just like to start with the definition of an argument from an analogy fallacy. An argument from analogy is a special type of inductive argument whereby perceived similarities are used as a basis to infer some further similarity that is yet to be observed. That last part, that last part there is the most important yet to be observed. Like if you want to say, is the complexity encoding in the DNA caused by a mind? That's a possibility. But for it to be evidence, you have to actually observe that. You have to demonstrate it. Just using an argument from analogy and saying, well, it's like our code isn't evidence. That's just all imaginary. For something to count as evidence, you need some way to differentiate between what's imaginary and what's real. And science, that's what science does. Like Debates about ID are just a waste of time. As PZ Myers articulately put it, science is settled in the lab. If you want to actually do science, go to the lab. And you can just prove this in five minutes if you want. Make testable predictions, confirm them correct, and you have evidence for ID. That's all it takes. 
science doesn't care about analogies or uh, philosophy. The irony of what he said is, is I'm not using any philosophical arguments. I'm just straight up asking for evidence demonstrated in the lab or you've got nothing. And he has done none of that. All he said is argument from analogy, argument from analogy, argument from incredulity, argument from ignorance. Like we don't know it, therefore designer. Oh, it's really complicated. And we do really complicated stuff, therefore designer. Or, oh, we, we've seen design stuff and we do design stuff. And oh, it's, it's kind of like that, therefore designer. Like that's an argument from analogy, an argument from incredulity, and an argument from ignorance. None of those are evidence. We know none of those are evidence. We've known those are not evidence since the time of Plato and Aristotle and Socrates because they don't work. That's why we use science. Science says for something to be evidence, demonstrate it in a lab. If you don't do that, you have no evidence. Just saying it's kind of like the stuff we do isn't evidence. You need to make novel testable predictions. Abiogenesis does that repeatedly, which is why pretty much everybody in science accepts it because it's supported by evidence and ID is rejected because it's not supported by evidence, which is why it was ruled to be a pseudoscience in a federal court case by a Christian judge. There's no nothing there. It's just a bunch of philosophical fallacious arguments we didn't know don't work. All right. Thanks for that concluding statement there, Tom. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks again for uh, giving us your time, gentlemen. Uh, we do have a good Q&A, uh, but just to respect the time of the debaters, um, unfortunately, we might not be able to get through all of the questions, but we'll get through as many as we can. So uh, why don't we get right to it then? Um, we'll start with Luca. Luca, thanks for your question. This one is for, uh, okay, this one's for John. So John, uh, Luca asks, why do we only have carbon-based life? Why not silicone one? Uh, well, it's, uh, there's actually quite a few papers on this in the organic chemistry world, but uh, I forget the exact... All the exact details, but the silicon can't make as many complex combinations of uh, fusions. That's why. Thanks for interrupting my uh, sentence again. That's basically what I was about to say. Next question. Okay, so if that's all you guys have there, let's go right to the next question from Anthony Maurice. Anthony asks, question for Tom. Uh, he says, my question for Tom is, is he aware that chemists use manipulated controlled conditions and activated nucleotides and purified reagents that would never be found on an early earth? They don't need to be found on early earth. Like no one cares about that yet. The goal is just to find out how natural processes can produce the information as, uh, ID proponents call it to produce life. You don't actually need to be the early earth atmosphere it just needs to be any natural processes and then we can discover which ones happen on the early earth much later but the first thing is just discover how natural processes can do this not how they happened necessarily on the early earth so it doesn't actually matter whether or not those specific ones happen on the early earth or not it's not relevant okay um we can allow a quick response yeah that does have relevance to whether or not it's a conclusion of life's existence and not the result of intelligent agents being able to manipulate the variables to build something. Oh, all right. Anyway. So they don't manipulate the variables in the experiment. They just set the experiment up with a specific set of variables. Actually, they admit that they manipulate them by stopping them and starting them and providing the purified environments and the purified uh, chemicals. And I mean, well, it's it, 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 really admitted. I mean, uh, Clements Richard, uh, back in 2008, is, they can't like do the experiment without starting it and stopping it. They literally have to do those things, and they have to actually put the pieces together and then start it. So, yeah, but none of that's actually relevant to the question. So, yes, they always put the pieces together and then they press the start button and then they press the stop button when it's over. Yes, obviously. Okay. You're it's if you're not putting if you're actually looking for research in abiogenesis and you're not putting it in a realistic environment, then you're not actually researching abiogenesis. Well, you're no, researching whether or not you can wrong as a human can cause an outcome and put on well, and abiogenesis have isn't the origin of life on earth. Abiogenesis is the origin of life. It doesn't matter if it happened on earth. The early earth atmosphere isn't relevant to abiogenesis. It's only relevant to abiogenesis on earth. The first thing we're trying to discover is how abiogenesis can happen anywhere in the universe. And then once we discover 
the spectrum of what is required for abiogenesis, then we can narrow it down to try and figure out how it happened on Earth. But first, we're just trying to discover how it could happen anywhere in the universe by any natural processes. That's the first thing. It's how science works. Like trying to discover how it happened on Earth first would make no sense at all. Okay. Well, the uh, more than a few of those folks have <laughs> literally stated that it would require a miracle for it to... Given no uh, natural processes, but that's it. We can always just discover tomorrow that, it's, that, no, that, that, that that's based on natural processes. It would be a miracle. No, no natural processes. It could just okay. be unknown natural processes that do it. Just like anything, it's like not a problem. Okay, let's let's move on to the next question. Uh, thanks for that, guys. It, like I said, it's been a very lively discussion. The chat, everyone is enjoying. So let's keep her going. We've got Call Me Emo. His question is for John. I'll read a word for word. Uh, thanks for your question, Emo. He asks, if all minds we know of are the product of biological brains and brains need bodies to build stuff, are you implying that your designer is also a biological entity? Take your time, John. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, with the uh, with what we're discovering in quantum mechanics regarding the ability for consciousness to control uh, matter and physical outcomes, then it doesn't necessarily require a physical force. It requires consciousness to have the end outcome. Okay. Thanks for that. Do you want a quick response, Tom, or move on to the next? Yeah. The consensus is, is that uh, consciousness doesn't have any effect in um, physics at all. I think the last poll showed that it's less than two to six percent of physicists actually agree that consciousness collapsed. The von Neum Wigner von Neumann hypothesis is actually a legitimate thing. So 90 something percent say, nope, it doesn't. Now you're going back to authority. The, and if you actually go and not appeal to authority is only a fallacy if it's not actually an authority. So I'm actually allowed to do that. Well, and they, but I think that same study said that 50 something percent of them do think that consciousness has some element to it. And if you read the papers, no, no, it was 90% don't, it was 6% do. They no, they think that consciousness does. There was another variable in there, I believe, that said, uh, "Do you think consciousness consciousness has some impact?" And if you go and talk, if you watch interviews with some of the leading minds out there, the only reason that they say that it's not consciousness is, "Oh, well, there was no consciousness at the beginning of the universe because no, if they're flying." Okay, then I think you should go watch some of the. I interviews. have. I literally know where they where they like, where they Sean Carroll about this. Like that's not why. It's because it makes no Tesla predictions. It makes no verifiable results. It has no impact. Wigner himself refuted his own theory and said he was wrong to apply micro systems of quantum mechanics to macro uh, systems of. Okay, so the fact that they've started figuring out and have done test experiments where it goes all the way up to the macro level uh, within the last couple of years. Uh, is starting to circumvent that. Uh, no, it's not. Like literally everything in quantum mechanics is explained by all of the different interpretations, which is why only 6% accept quantum uh, consciousness collapse. Like all of those same experiments are explained by the many worlds interpretation, the EPR, the, the what is it, quantumness collapse, the developed own possible quantum pilot wave theory. All of them explain the exact same things. None of them make novel predictions. That's why none of them are accepted as a majority yet. Okay. So 2018 from guys who've done quite a few of these uh, experiments. Uh, uh, taken together, these experiments indicate that the everyday world we perceive does not exist until observed, which in turn suggests, and we shall argue in this essay, a primary role for mind and nature. It is thus high time for the scientific community at large, not only in those involved in foundations of QM, faced up to the counterintuitive, counterintuitive implications of QM's most controversial predictions. Which is, again, um, only accepted by 6% of the people in the field, which is why it's like, okay, there are, there are papers that are published in it, which 6% of the people who are in physicists do publish papers arguing for that, which is not accepted by 90% of them. That's kind of the point, is that, yes, there are some who do support that, 6%, but the majority say, no, that's not supported. And so the guys that are actually doing the experiments are the ones that are saying that, yes, it is a reality. 6% Six, of the ones doing the experiments. But there, oh, there's always physicists that deny it. 90% yeah, of them deny okay. it, yes. Like, like I'm pretty sure that 5 was 5% of biologists that reject evolution. 5% of climate scientists deny okay. climate change. Right. There's, there's always a minority. 
It's not, there isn't evidence of anything. Hey guys, um, let's move on to the next one. Um, like I said, lots of good questions here. This question is from Conflict34. Thanks for your question. Uh, let me see. This one's for Tom. He says, so evolutionists claim DNA is evidence because of similarities, but using DNA as a similarity to computer codes is not evidence? Question mark. No, the evidence, DNA isn't evidence because of similarities. DNA is evidence because of testable predictions. It's the fact that we can make testable predictions that makes it evidence, not the fact that it, I don't know what you mean by similarities. Like no one in evolution uses just similarities in DNA as the evidence. It's the testable predictions that are the evidence. Okay, let's move on. Did, to the did, I, did, I, did I just hear that, no, hang on. Did I just hear that nobody in evolution science uses similarities? I'm pretty sure that as the, evidence. the similarities in genes is directly used as evidence. I mean, no, it was do you not know how the molecular clock that were whole deal? It's not like they looked at no, the similarities. The direct comparison of the, of, of the sequences of the sequences of the DNA sequences comparison and similarities in terms of functional outcome of By the code piece, which you claim doesn't have. By it testable test predictions. It wasn't testable predictions. They yeah. literally yeah. matched them up to see if they matched or not. That's it. Yeah, they, they made predictions <laughs> about what would happen, and then they tested those predictions by looking at them and saying, yes, they do match the results we expect. Based, Therefore, based that's on some, okay. So, so that, that's how evidence works, is you make predictions, mm -hmm. and then you confirm them in a lab. That's what science right. is. All right. Okay, let's go on to the next question then. Uh, let me see here. This question is from Mitchell. Question is for T-Jump. Without intelligent design, what ultimate eternal energy created the universe without invoking the theory using a multiverse generator? Take your time. There's actually infinitely many possible theories that could do that. You just have an eternal, all-powerful, natural thing. And there are natural theories that exist outside of space-time, like Nima Arkani Hamad's amplitudehedron and Sean Carroll's emergent space-time, just to name two. Like, there's nothing that shows that natural things can't exist outside of space-time. We have theories that they do. Like, there's literally anything the supernatural could explain the unknown natural can also explain so that's why we require testable predictions and evidence to actually verify things quick response john and move on to the next question let's move on okay so this question is from speed of sound of gravity question is for uh he doesn't specify i'm guessing it's for you john he says did you guys know that the codon code is not the same in every organism It is nearly universal. There are some very slight modifications um, and they're looking into those, but they actually, several papers I've read recently, they're actually seeing that those slight modifications actually have uh, very specific modifications in very specific organisms, not from a, uh, Anyway, it's, there's there's a bunch of papers on that whole deal, but yes, I'm aware of the slide modifications, but it is generally universal across the board. Okay, thanks for that. You know, uh, Speed of Sound actually had a second question. His question, John, was um, what is the link to the Royal Society article or the article about semantics, syntax, and pragmatics or the full name of the paper? Did you want to just provide that to him after or? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, question from Gavin Hurleyman. Thanks for your question. The question is for T Jump. Where does the code for DNA come from? And in brackets, he says it's not from RNA. From RNA. Okay, let's um, let me see a couple a couple more questions here. Question from Jesus paid it all. Question is for Tom. Uh, let me see. I lost it here. There we go. What in genetics would convince you of a god? Testable predictions. Like I don't know what specific testable predictions you can make using intelligent design. Like, for example, you could predict that if my an intelligent designer designed it, we would be able to find a specific line of code that's read, "My name is Bob, and I designed the genetic code." That would be one example. Like any testable predictions you could make would be evidence. Like it doesn't. That's a really weird example, but just testable predictions. That's all you need. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to that one. The, the, it is such an obvious answer that 
it does not require a a signature as in oh yeah yeah you're a, right a, a that physical was, name but no when, I, when i'm was, going uh, all this not, is the uh the fact that it operates as a information processing system a communication system and has programming logic rules semantics syntax and pragmatics and nothing else in spite of your denial uh, has that in the context of technology application and prescription a prescribed application uh, outside of things that have been intelligently, de intelligently designed, that is the evidence that's required. And you can either accept that or deny it. It doesn't change the fact that it exists. Yeah, that's, that's just an argument from analogy. We know that doesn't work. No, it's not an argument from analogy. It's a literal... It's, it's literally the definition, which is why I read it as my rebuttal or my conclusion. It's literally the definition of an argument. Except for all the papers, they literally go into the fact, this is not an analogy. This is, it is this. I mean, if you're going to deny that the fact that those papers exist, then so be it. But they literally start the papers off with, I know it's been called and there's been all this conversation and confusion and, you know, disagreement. But here's why all, it is exactly what is being described, not just an analogy. And it's still rejected by the majority of everyone in biology because it's an argument from analogy. I guess the $10 million it's up for grabs for whoever uh, can recreate a coding translation and decoding system that follows uh, information theory in the exact same structure. Uh, I guess that doesn't exist even though it's being endorsed and judged by some of the top academic institutions on this planet. Yeah, we haven't found it yet. That's not evidence. That no, no, they're trying to recreate one. Yeah, we haven't found the correct that. way to do that. Yet. No, no, you're talking about, evidence. we're talking about what is required for it. So you're saying that it's just an analogy. And I'm saying that the, and you're saying that it's a completely accepted by academia, it's just an analogy. What I'm telling you is that there's $10 million on the line for somebody who can do it as a, yes. in a literal f fashion, not an analogy fashion. Yes, because found that be yet, because the one that's in our in our bodies and all organic life is exactly that. Well, no, no. So that is again, that's an argument from incredulity. We haven't found it yet. I'm not the one being incredulous. I'm talking about what they are saying. That is no right, longer right. An analogy. It's, it's a literal. Still, it's still an argument from analogy. Literal, it's, not analogy. Literal, not analogy. You're not. Is that not computing with you? No, no, no. You're not getting it. So the fact that we haven't discovered a solution to this problem yet isn't evidence it's not an analogy so that's that's an argument from ignorance we don't know something yet therefore you can't do that you can't go we don't know I, I, therefore I, 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 don't, I don't think i don't think you're following what i'm saying here I, they, i'm pretty sure no, no, no I, I think you don't because they're what the, the prize is for is to create yes. a system that can do exactly what ours does yes i agree with that we haven't done it yet a different we model haven't. We haven't okay. done it yet. Correct. They haven't done it yet, but that's not the point. The point is that what they're requiring you to do is not an analogy to coding, decoding, and programming. It is literal, not analogy. And that is the entire point that I'm making. You're claiming that it's right, right. an argument of analogy. The they're analogy. saying, no, it is not just an analogy. It is a literal. Right. right. I agree there is coding. Okay. I said that like multiple times. I agree it does do coding. That's not the analogy part. The analogy part is humans did the coding. Therefore, there is a brain or minds did the coding. Therefore, there is a mind that did this coding. That's the analogy. The which, mind is why, which is why I asked you earlier, do you think that any other type of coding and programming could exist without intelligence? To which not, you said no. Not that we know of. The humankind. We know that physics does it perfectly well. <laughs> physics does not create coding. <laughs> okay. It, Next question. Does. Okay. So thanks for that, gentlemen. We've got Faithful, Honest, and True. He asks T-Jump, who... Oh, who Almost lost that one there. Okay, here we go. Who set the laws of quantum mechanics in motion? Go ahead. Uh, it was reality did that. So it's not a who, it's a what. Reality, it's the nature of reality itself. Okay, thanks for that response. And last question of the night comes from Jesus is Lord. Question is for T-Jump. Can you explain the difference between intelligent design and creationism? Nope, they're the same thing. They are literally the same thing. Or, I mean, you could say one's more of a general category, like all roses are flowers, not all flowers are roses. So creationism says a specific thing created it, usually a god of a Christian god, whereas intelligent design just says any kind of intelligence can explain this kind of process. So it's more of like a more general version, but they are both the same kind of thing, like all flowers or all roses are flowers. 
Okay, thanks, Tom. Uh, quick response, John, or? No, we're, it's obvious that uh, worldviews uh, completely differ. And I guess from T-Jump's perspective, humans aren't actually smart enough to be able to determine if there is something uh, that requires intelligence unless we physically observe the original execution of it. Uh, not the original. I'd say you need to be able to observe some testable consequences. We know that humans are stupid and make up imaginary things all the time, like Zeus and uh, Yahweh and all kinds of religious beliefs and fairies and leprechauns and unicorns. And so we need some way to differentiate between the imaginary stupid stuff we make up and reality, which is why you need the testable predictions. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys. Like I said, this was a great discussion. Uh, we got to most of the questions in the audience, so thanks for the questions, guys. Lots of good ones. Um, yeah, thanks to the debaters for uh, giving us their time. And uh, if you guys want to say a, a few last words, plug in your channels or something, uh, you can do so now, and then we'll uh, call it a night. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, yeah, my channel is uh, youtube.com slash tjump. I do debates with usually academic professors and philosophers on these kinds of topics. And feel free to check out my channel. Uh, thanks for uh, making it through. Sorry for my technical issues. Uh, if you want to check out my stuff, uh, just search logical, plausible, probable, and it'll come right up. And I have some more videos coming out this week. And uh, hopefully I have a few more debates over this next couple of weeks as well. So check it way up for uh, announcements of those. Awesome. Thanks, John. And yeah, no, no worries. I'd say over 95% of the debate came out well. There's a couple little technical issues, but for the most part, non-existent. So uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. Check out uh, next debate would be Friday. Like I said, 9 EST. Bill Morgan versus uh, Jordan from Reasons to Doubt on Creation versus Evolution. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Praise to shut it down. Once again, thanks uh, for joining us, guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure um, hosting um, this debate. But I'm going to have an after show. People can come on if they want. But I'm going to end it here. I want to say thank you for the chat coming and T-Jump and John and SFT. We're going to say uh, God bless and good night.